A dream doesn't become reality through magic. It takes sweat, determination, and hard work. And this is Wright Brennan with the Lost in the Midlands podcast, sponsored by C. Wright Roofing. And today I am fired up to introduce our guests, educators of the next generation, scholars, people making a huge impact in the community, Dr. Reginald China, the media instructor at Hayward Career and Technology Center, and Ricky Moy, the assistant principal at Hayward Career and Technology Center. Gentlemen, thanks for hanging out. Thank you. Hey, Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. All right, so before we jump into some of the cool stuff that's going on at Hayward, I would love to hear y'all's background a little bit. Um, and I'll start with uh, Dr. China. Tell me a little bit about how you got into the education space. Well, um, I come from a family of uh, teachers and preachers. Okay. <laughs> and so, um, you know, it, I guess it was only a matter of time. And, it was fate. Uh, yeah, and so I, I worked in television news uh, for about 15 years as a uh, TV director and technical director. Cool. And then um, eventually I knew I wanted to transfer into something bigger, yeah. and the opportunity came up, and I, and I took the leap and uh, started at Hayward uh, in 2014 and just recently got a promotion to instructional technology coach. So Congratulations. Uh, it's, it's, it's been a blessing, and that's when I learned being an educator is not a job, it's a calling. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know it's it's a um, it's a power. It's got to be a powerful thing when you can kind of see the impact you're making on the people that you're working, like the direct impact. You know, uh, for any educator, when you see that light bulb goes off, yeah, that that's what makes it worth it. Um, and and a lot of times you don't see the impact you had until years later. I, I, I you know very quickly I had a young lady that used to sleep in class all the time and yeah. would be like, you know. You talking too much and da da da, <laughs> and then she, a year or two after she graduated, she came back and she was like, you know, I used to think you talked too much, but because of what you used to say in those times when you used to go on these rants, yeah, I didn't drop out of school, and now I'm in college trying to better my future, and that's one of those moments that it just kind of pulls at the heartstrings and. When the water is looking a little slim because we are educators, yeah, <laughs> you know it makes it <laughs> worth it. <laughs> yeah, that that really is fantastic. I gotta imagine that is an awesome feeling when you hear that from all the all the hard work you guys do. You know, <laughs> good to hear that. Assistant principal <laughs> yeah. Ricky Moy, how did you get into the field? Oh wow! Like I said, it wasn't a a, a traditional route. You know, I was on the manufacturing floor doing yeah. something that I went to college for. I was a system analyst. Oh wow. I were I was a system analyst with it was Selectron at the time. And I think the names done changed so many times. We're right over here in uh, West Columbia. It's cool. called Tektronics or whatever now. But it was N C R. Um but the thing is I always had a liking and loving for for kids and, and coaching. Yeah. So and I was a former football player and things like that. So I took a probably a fifteen to twenty thousand pay cut just to be a substitute teacher because it you wasn't happy. I wasn't being fulfilled. Yeah, yeah. What I was doing. So I said, hey, I'm going to coach middle school football. Got an opportunity. Awesome. Uh, walk in the hall as a monitor. And the next thing you know, I was finishing up my four-year degree, and I was in the classroom teaching. So it's a it's a long process through that. But I started enjoying really being around kids and definitely um, coaching. Football brought me in. And when that was pretty much not taken away, but I knew it wasn't, you know, it wasn't going to be at the same high school that I was at. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I say that's fine because I love being in the classroom, love teaching. But off of that, I did get another opportunity to coach football. And ever since then, I said, well, if I'm going to stay in education, which I think it is a calling, like uh, Dr. China said, yeah, it's a calling. And I say I want to max it out my full potential. So that's how I got into getting my you know master's in, in education. So, I, hey, if I'm going to stay in this thing, I want to one day be an administrative type of position. So with a former military background and things like that. And then you got to tell kids your route. Yeah. That you took so to kind of influence them because you never know one conversation can turn into a whole plethora of things. Like I was in the Air Force and the students, hey, you was in the Air Force. I'm thinking <laughs> about going in the Air Force. So now you're talking about uh, a different conversation. And, yeah. and once again, as educators, it's our job to provide students with opportunities yeah. and experiences. And my experience could definitely give them an opportunity to, to be successful in life. So. That's how I looked at it. And next thing you know, I was in the education, got an opportunity with being an uh, assistant principal. Yeah. Um, and once again, it's, 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 been a, it's been a road. It's been 21 years now. So wow. I've been an administrator, administrator now for about 10 years. 
And once again, I love it. Uh, it's awesome to see y'all's passion for the job. Yeah. And it's, it's an interesting point, too. You know, being an educator, it's you're also a leader. You know, you got to have mm-hmm. leadership to be able to, to bring these kids, uh, to point them in the right direction. Yes, that's correct. And um, mm-hmm. I, I can just tell just from speaking with you guys that you definitely, you guys have the qualities that makes the impact on the kids. Well, you know, I think one of the biggest things you have to do to be an effective educator is you have to be a relationship builder. Mm. And, you know, with any student, I believe if you can't reach them, you can't teach them. That makes sense. And you have to figure out what type of relationship. So every relationship isn't, hey, let me be that mentor to you. Sometimes it's, let me just give you a safe space. Yeah. Sometimes let me not feel like you're under attack. And it's not that educators attack them, but, you know, our children sometimes have different perspectives. Yeah. And so just letting them know that I'm going to hold you accountable, but I care about you. And a lot of times, once you break down that wall, now you can really start the education process. Yeah. And definitely, you know, just talking about when you talked about being a leader. Yeah. You know, and you say, what kind of leader are you? Like I said, I got a military background, so that's a different type of leader. But you can't be military all the time with your kids. You know, you got, you know, so many different types of background. But I put it in this perspective that I'm a situational leader. Yeah. Because you have to be able to change with each kid or each person that you deal with, even in adults. They're different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it depends on the situation. You got to change your leadership style. Got to change to that. And he can do that because I done seen him laugh with a kid, then straighten that back up and hey, hey, come in. <laughs> Some kids you lead with a little more force than others. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So, that's, yeah, that that's awesome. Um, all right, tell me a little bit about the different opportunities that the kids have at Hayward. Um, I'll let either of you guys jump off. Well, um, one of the biggest push we have now is, is trying to make every kid college and career ready. And that's our goal. Heck and yeah. so um, what we want to do is um, we want to make sure they have the opportunity to either go to a four-year college, yeah. to go to a two-year college, go in the military, or go straight into the workforce. And that's our overall goal. Yeah. And we uh, are at, at – in Richland, one – we have all 16 career clusters. There are 16 career clusters, clusters for all, you know, for our job spaces. And I believe Hayward has what? 14. 14, yeah, 14. of the 16 wow. there. Wow. And so almost anything you can think of, we have there. Um, we, we have building construction. We have diesel technology. We have automotive mechanic. We have cosmetology, master hair care. We have uh, cybersecurity and networking. We have um, CDL. Uh, CDL. Okay. You, you can yeah. learn to get your CDL. We have, what else? We have, we have welding. Welding. Uh, megatronics. Really? Yeah. Wow. Manufacturing. And, of course, uh, he said construction one. Mm-hmm. Construction. And so almost anything you can think of, we, we got, we, this year we just started a fashion design class. And I went in there the other day and the young, and, and this young ladies were, were sewing. But we also have non-traditional students. And so some of our best students in the DESA program are young ladies. So it's not, cool. it's open to anyone. And so that's really what our goal is for the students to come in and kind of figure out what they want to be, where they want to go. Um, one of the things I love about career and technical education is that at least in high school, you have the opportunity to find your passion or to realize this isn't your passion before you waste years of your formative life or before you waste thousands of dollars in college. Now, nah, this ain't for me. Yeah. <laughs> and and I just don't want to piggyback off what you said. Um, We do also have nursing and okay. we have wow. the health science yep. fields and we yeah. have sports medicine. Yep. Things like that. Um, while you was talking about it, it was a student that came her 10th grade year. I think she was maybe going into nursing. Um, but she changed it. And the next year she came back, she went to culinary. So it was like, <laughs> okay. I you mean, get to she, try. You, you get, get to try, to try different it. things. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So what I'm, what I'm saying is, you know, she maybe didn't like it yeah. the first year and say, I want to try something different. And she came back the following year. And then once again, she ends up being a completer in that culinary arts. Mm-hmm. So it it definitely um, is. It, it can happen in different, a bunch of different ways if you choose to um, push in that direction. And we also just started a baking and pastry program. Baking and pastry. <laughs> Left that out. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready to go back to school. Man. It's like, it's well, you, you know, saying that, you know, when I know at least when I was in school and, and when Mr. Moore's in school, you know, the career center was almost a negative thing. Mm-hmm. And, and that's mm-hmm. one of the things that I'm glad we have this opportunity to, to have this platform because – 
Korean technical education is not that anymore. Yeah. Now this is a step towards your career. I remember taking my students a few years ago to University of South Carolina on a field trip. Yeah. And they walked into the the studio in the same equipment Carolina was using. My students were using. <laughs> and so now this is a way to get going into your field. Yeah. You walk into college with a step up. Yeah. So I think we have to make sure we get the word out and change the connotation and change the viewpoint. Vocational school is not for you not to have a future. It's yeah. to start your future. We have a saying at Hayward, this is where your future begins. Yeah, that that's, that is fantastic. Um, tell me what challenge do, like, as the – the markets change and businesses change and the whole world's changing. What challenges are the kids facing coming out? I mean, I, I can tell that y'all's program tailors to getting the kids ready. Is, or is there like a, I mean, I feel like you guys are almost filling a gap that was needed that, you know, maybe 10 years ago wasn't even there. Mm-hmm. Is that, is that, is that one of the challenges that you guys are fulfilling or? It is. I mean, it is a challenge and knowing we two years, four years, well, three years, four years removed from the pandemic. And, you know, it's a different group of kids from oh, the, yeah. when it was pre, uh, pre-pandemic. Interesting, yeah. So it's it's like we have to be cognizant and understand that we, we got to recognize that with our students, you know, with where they are now. We got to take them from where they are. Yeah. You know, from where they are and try to work them to get into where they want to be. And the main thing is that we haven't challenged with the kids really sometimes um, they don't know what they want to do. Yeah. And and even though they go through and take different things in middle school to figure out what your likeness is, what your future things, and taking tests and things like that, figure out what they what they want to be when they grow up. Yeah. But sometimes kids really don't know. And like I said, when they get to us, they got four years. <laughs> four years is our job as high school, being in high school to get them into their career and get them for one. I tell the kids all the time, I'm trying not to let you live with your mama for the rest of your life. You know? <laughs> That type of thing. So I'm trying to set you up, you know, whether it's, like I said, military, whether it's yeah. uh, going into a, a different career field or going to college or things like that. Once again, we got to give them options. But that's that's one of the things that we definitely have a problem with. Kids that really don't know what they want to do. And the students that we have like 700, we got 750 students that's come through Hayward. Wow. But guess what? It should be a whole lot more. We want, we would love to have 1,200 busting out the seams at, at Hayward. You know, so more kids, the better. You know, but like I said, we have 750 that come on A-day and B-day schedule morning and afternoon, and we would definitely want to bring more kids in. But sometimes we got to deal with those things because we deal with the seven high schools within the district. Yeah, seven wow. Seven high schools in the district. A lot of high schools feeding in. Yes. So. yes. so when everybody gets together, I guess it's time to make new friends when you, when you come you, back. You're right. <laughs> you, you know, you would be amazed with the lifelong relationships, yeah. the friendships that are built from different schools. Um, you know, yeah. it's good too when it's rivalry, you know, weeks. You can oh, talk yeah. trash oh, yeah. all yeah. week and then, you know, go to the game. But I've seen so many bonds created just because, yeah. you know, we came to Hayward. That's cool. Yeah, that that is awesome. This is Wright Brennan, the owner of C. Wright Roofing. When it comes to the maintenance of your roof, you want to know that you have an experienced team that knows what they're doing. And with 10 years in the business, we check all the boxes. Leaky roof, storm damage, or just overdue on maintenance, give us a call at 803-828-4181 for a free estimate. Again, that's 803-828-4181. And remember, our commitment is to roof it the right way. Let me ask a question about kids who may not be interested in going into college. I mean, like let's say they're not going to school and and they got to get they got to st- they got to get a job. You know, do, can you y'all have a path for those kids too? So the goal of every one of our programs is to have an industry certification by the time you leave our program. And so there are monies from the federal and the state level that are used to pay for a certification tests. And so our goal is to try to prepare the students to take that certification test and to pass that certification test. Yeah. And so then, yeah, I'm not going to school, but I have the certification that I can walk out. And when I go to apply for a company, I have the certification. And that will give them, um, you know, not going to, well, a leg up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, you know, now a company says, well, I don't have to train this kid and pay for the certification. They come in certification, which may help them. Yeah. 
Yeah, I hear so much, you know, being in the roofing industry, just being around a lot of trades people, you know, hey, we need more people getting into the trades. It's not mm-hmm. cool, but we need the, you know, we're looking for people who are interested. And um, I, I just was thinking, gosh, you know, I'm, I'm sure some of the kids that are coming out, you know, there may be opportunities there and, and y'all are getting kids certified. So, yeah. And, and one of the things, um, you know, we're trying to do is close that skills gap. And, yeah. and, and we also have... Um, career and technical student organizations, one of which is uh, I'm one of the advisors with is Skills USA. Cool. And that's one of the goals with Skills USA is to provide a workforce, you know, that is ready for tomorrow to close the skills gap. Yeah. They built a framework for students to go on based on industry feedback. Yeah. Industry says this is what our students need, and it's something we try to promote inside of Hayward as well, along with other student organizations. So, yeah, we're right there with you. We understand that there is a skills gap, and there is research now that shows that you don't necessarily need a four-year degree. We need people who have the high school to associates. Yeah, That's what we need. In America right now. And so that's one of the things that is great about Hayward. It's one of our goals. And, and there are other CTE centers um, in, in this area, in the Midlands and across the state. And, and that's we all kind of have that same mission of trying yeah. to help close the skills gap. Yeah. And each program um, does have an advisory board. Mm-hmm. And advisory boards are so important because uh, the teachers kind of select people and ask them to be on the advisory board that's actually in the industry that they're okay. actually yeah. um, working on within their program. And those industry folk would tell them what we need in this industry to help us prepare the students for that. And also that their relationships, because a lot of times uh, when these kids graduate from high school, they can revert back to that advisory board and maybe they can offer them an outside opportunity to start them in the career field that they desire to be in. Or they may know somebody. Once again, it's all who you know a lot of times when it comes to jobs and things and so forth. So yeah. that's what the advisory board is so important. And we meet like uh, periodically throughout the year. Uh, that we have meetings with our advisory board, luncheons and things like that, that each individual cluster that we talked about earlier, they meet with their advisory boards and, and build that relationship and that bond. And once again, it's people that they're selected that chosen to be on there so they can definitely help out with the students once they got, do graduate. Heck yeah. You guys are connecting a lot of dots. Yeah. So I'm fired up for these kids. You know, they, yes. They're on the right path. I, I know they are. Um, all right. So tell me, there are some um, some interesting things going on. I know this is a big year, a um, big month. Uh, assistant principal, <laughs> what's going on at Hayward right now? Oh, man, this is this is going to be a busy month for us. Um, February is uh, CTE month, Career and Technology Education Month. Um, cool. It's across the whole country. Yeah, we celebrate a month of February for that. So we got a lot of things planned throughout the month from uh, from uh, definitely dealing with our uh, or student organizations. They have stuff planned throughout the week yeah. uh, with all the students and you know that they're, they're participating in. We also have uh, to get the parents involved, like today, uh, February the 2nd is over the, I think over the state is actually shadow day where you can take your, um, your kid to work with you type day and they fill out cool. the forms and whatnot through the school district. So what we plan in this month is uh, plan out for our parents to come shadow the student in their program. So they get to come and do a typical day at Hayward Career and Technology Center. They get to go through the labs, uh, go through the actual um uh, actually, the same things that the students are doing in the labs, whether it's culinary. I'm, we're going to be cooking today. You're going to assist with us and create yeah. this project, the thing and whatnot with the rubric and so forth. So uh, the parents will uh, shadow their students later on in the month. We got some other things planned out. Matter of fact, it is uh, next week is also, you know, our um, our honor roll assembly. So we have over out of we got maybe 300 students, 400 students that actually made the honor roll. At, at Hayward, and we're going to recognize those students wow. and things like that and also give them incentives. So we provide, you do good, we're going to supply you incentives. And, yeah. you know, and that's one thing, kids strive off of uh, providing them things that they they love food. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And this is also the yeah. 50th year that Hayward has been in existence. So this is our 50th anniversary. We had a huge gala back in November I uh, had all the living principals come back. We honored a bunch of students who've left Hayward awesome. and done things. Um, so, yeah, and, and and so in March, we're going to try to plan some more events. But, yeah, this is our family, 50th year. Family so. and Fun Day is actually yeah. coming in March. Yeah, so we're, okay. we're planning. Cool. Uh, this is our 50th anniversary, so we're super proud that um, we've had 50 years of, of excellence, 50 years of trying to help close the skills gap in our community. Yeah, that's fantastic. Congrats to you guys. 50 years going strong, helping yes, kids out. If some 
buddy out there is listening, they're like, you know what, I, I do want to get involved. This is a path that I'm interested in, a kid out there in high school. What what steps do they need to take to kind of to kind of filter their way into y'all's program? Well, uh, it, it starts early. Uh, we we even we have tours. I'm just starting real young. We we have tours because we want to plant that seed in them about what Hayward mm-hmm. has to offer. So we our guidance counselor sets up tours even with elementary schools. Oh wow! And they got middle school tours going on now with the you know uh, whether their eighth graders about to go to college so they can see what we have to offer so they can get with their guidance counselors at their school. To, hey, say let's put me in this path. I want to go into. Uh, a, a program that that's offered at Hayward, and I want to see what's direction. So we bring the students over and get them walking around with their teachers, with their guidance counselors, so they can understand um, what path do I need to get into. And like I said, we run we we have seven high schools within Richmond School District work on one, and also including the middle college. We do have middle college that have students that come through also. Wow! But um, it's it's. It's just about, you know, making it known within our district and yep. try to f- uh, form that family oriented environment with our and be uh, transparent with the counselors and, and whatever we have. Try to be that full connecting chain because any link in the chain, if it's if it's broken, it's not going to be connected. So we yep. try to um, form that bridge that gap because at the end of the day, if we don't have kids. We don't have we technically don't have a job. So we still have to go out and recruit. Yeah. And make sure in a lot of our programs, they recruit on their own. So we have recruitment yeah. days where we do go over yep. to the local high schools and cool. things like that to make it known, mm-hmm. hey, this is what we offer. Even though they know, but sometimes yeah. you can't put it all on a kid that they know. Yeah. It's almost like you got to sell it to their parents. You got to sell it that to the kids. Sense. And, too, and so. that's that's what yeah. I was going to say. If, you, if you're a parent that wants your child to get interested, yeah. then I would say first thing you need to do is, is talk to your child's homeschool. Okay, so mm-hmm. if your child's in high school, go ahead and talk to the guidance counselor and let them know that you want your child to be there. Now, First and foremost, academics come first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got to be straight academically to be able to come to Hayward because they're going to put the priority on that on academics. But once you have an idea what your child would like to do, talk to the guidance counselors, call the CTE center in your district, you know, say if you're in another district, call the CTE center, take a tour, you know, talk to the guidance counselors there, talk to the administration, see what's there, and then start, like Mr. Moore said, start early. Go yeah. ahead and start the plan in eighth and ninth grade so they can start setting your classes up so that you can go ahead and fully participate in there. Because uh, you don't want to be a senior having to take all these extra classes just to go there. But I would say start early. Yep. Stay in communication with the guidance counselors. Oh, I'm sorry, the school counselors. Stay in communication with the school counselors. Stay in communication with with your uh, school, yeah. your CTE center, and see what programs they have to offer, and just go from there, and 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 take advantage of the opportunities to get your stop, your child a head start in life. Yeah. You know, that's really what it is. I, I I always remark to some of the teachers like it's crazy. We our job is to train these kids to make more money than we do. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's really what it is. Yeah. You know, so, that's a great selling point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it, about yeah. making an income. Yeah, <laughs> if you care about your child's future, let him get a head start instead of spending thousands of dollars in college, and now you're in a bunch of debt. Where yeah. I could have gone over there and found out this is what I want to do. Yeah. So just opportunity, and it's about opportunities. Um, I know once you get into the program, once the kids get, come to Hayward. Now, we talked about some opportunity they got while they end the program. Yeah, uh, we we send them on field studies too. All the I time. mean, all the time, so they can actually see what they'll be working in with a with a field. Like early in the year, uh, our IT students mm-hmm. they went to Cisco in Raleigh, North Carolina. In, cool, Raleigh, North Carolina, and they had to get up early and go through, and they went through, and they and they had opportunities. Then, hey, all I need is a certification. I mean, I need a four year degree. This occur- I'm getting certified in Cisco within the IT department. I can go straight in and work for Cisco. You know, so today uh, our culinary is going down to Charleston. Yep. You know, yep. and I'm pretty sure they're going down because, I, I mean, I love food, and Charleston has a lot yeah. to offer when it comes to food. That's a good and them, cook, <laughs> them kids can cook. Let and me tell you, cook. them <laughs> kids can cook. <laughs> so just giving them opportunity with field yeah. studies and field trips that they at actually in their field is another once they're in the program, that's something that they can actually see. I hear you saying it, but now yeah. I get to actually see mm-hmm. it within the field. 
makes sense. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, it's a privilege to have you guys on. Um, it's so awesome to hear about the, the way you guys are connecting dots. Me being in the home improvement industry, I get fired up to hear that you guys are moving kids towards towards the trades yes, and, and making yes. a huge impact. We'll have to have you guys back on to catch up in the future. Absolutely. So I know you guys have so many more programs and opportunities there. We'll, we'll definitely want to touch on. But thanks again for coming on today. Oh, it's been it's an been extreme an honor, honor a, priv- a privilege to – Promote not only uh, Hayward Career Center, but career and technology education. So thank you so much. For Absolutely. That. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Hey, everyone. Many thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, give us a follow and click the bell to stay up to date on future episodes or click the link to watch another previous episode. Also, don't forget to like, share, and please leave us a comment. We'd love to hear your feedback.